Lesson 3 of Government Notes, and specifically U.S. Government. So our question here is, what is government? If men were angels, there would be no need for government, is a quote, and I, it doesn't say who, who said that. So then we have a, sort of a definition or an explanation of what the government does. The government makes and enforces public policy. They are rules to live by, they provide order, they protect and provide for meeting the needs of its people, and people need boundaries slash common grounds. So in the colonial period, which is 16, from 1600 to the 1760s, people came from France, Sweden, Spain, the Netherlands, and the English or England area, which is the largest target group. People came because of personal and religious freedoms, commercial ventures like fertile soil, poor laws um, because debtors were kicked out of their countries or because they were prisoners. In then in the 13 colonies, England controlled the new colonies and shaped their government. So the three basic concepts of government and that time was that it was ordered. The government must be organized and follow orderly regulations with one another. Limited. Government should not be all-powerful. They can't do whatever it wants. And representative. Government should serve the people. Okay, so that's not what government was like then. It's what the people wanted it to be like. British people, like the British England, the King of England, controlled the government in the colonial area up until 1760. Uh, and the colonies were mostly self-governing due to England being 3,000 miles away, which also took two months to get there, and they had to go by ship. It was pretty relaxed because the colonies provided England with money and resources, and England let the colonies govern themselves. But British control after 1760, that changed. The French and Indian War happened, and then King George III took control. He inherited a lot of debt from the French and Indian War, and he was upset with the lack of control that he has in the United States. Well, in the, in the new colonies, New England colonies. And so he wants to regain the control of colonies, so he enacts some new taxes and uh, really restrictive regulations. Then we have this thing in quotes, which is kind of, I think, what people called this writing, which is the textbook of the American Revolution, which was written by John Locke, and it's his writings that influenced many leaders of the American Revolution. And then here are some concepts that he was writing about. He says that all people are born free, equal, and independent. People have to give consent to the government. The government's only legitimate if people support it. And then this is in quotes, if a government fails to protect natural rights, the people could change the government. And then I have a dash that says, does this have any meaning today? Because the way that my teacher wrote their teachers wrote their notes is that they wrote them to have questions and discussion topics in class. But because we're watching what they wrote on YouTube, uh, we can't really, it's not like a Zoom class, so it's, it's less interactive. Colonists' response to King George III, uh, they had their first attempt to unite. Before this, the colonies were 13 independent units set up for different reasons. But then the Stamp Act Congress happened, which the Stamp Act was a harsh trade and tax policies on all legal documents, newspapers, and business papers. The colonists claimed that this was taxation without representation, and then there's a question that says, why do we pay taxes? The colonists' reaction to uh, I'm just confused about what I wrote here. Colonists' reaction to uh, this Stamp Act, they got frustrated, then they became violent because they felt like they had no choice. So the first national government in the United States, we had a first and the second Continental Congress. By force of circumstance, 
It was really temporary. It had no constitutional authority, but served as an acting government during the war. The Revolutionary War breaks out in April of 1775. We are fighting for our freedom. No more strong government. We want our own. Uh, at the time of the uh, Continental, Continental Congresses, it was a unicameral congress, which means there was only one house. A bicameral congress has two congresses, two houses, and our congress today has two houses, which is the Senate and the House of Representatives. Then we have the Declaration of Independence. On July 4th, 1776, we wrote the Declaration of Independence that announced we are independent from England and listed the reasons why we are revolting. And that's all of Lesson 3, and I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up putting two lessons in every video, so that's going to be fun. Uh, but I hope you guys are learning things. United States Government Lesson 4. So our first state government made their own rules, but they were very similar. Common features were popular sovereignty. They exist only with the consent of the people. Limited government, they have restricted power. Civil rights and liberties, rights of citizens, and then there were separation of powers and checks and balances. The first national constitution. We ha in the second continental congress, there was a temporary government which was replaced by our new constitution, which was called the Articles of Confederation. And this constitution was very weak on purpose. The key weaknesses were that there was no power for national government to tax and force laws, regulate trade between states, there was no national court system, and there was unanimous consent needed to change or amend it. So, all the states had to agree if they wanted to change or amend the Articles of Confederation. In the 1780s, several problems broke out in the new nation that pointed to the fact that the new government was too weak. The new nation was falling apart. The states were taxing one another. The states printed their own money. Inflation happened, which was there was high prices and no credit. Violence happened, which was Shay's Rebellion, and we didn't get a lot of details on that, so go look that up on your own. The articles rested on the good faith of the states, which means they were relying on the states to follow the rules because the overall government, like the federal government, uh, wasn't about to come in there and tell them, hey, you're not following the rules because it didn't have that power. So if the states didn't do what they were supposed to be doing, no one was about to stop them. So creating the U.S. Constitution. And what we have here is a term that my teachers are using called the framers, but that basically just means the people who helped write and set up the Constitution and the United States government. And the framers were all white, male, under 41, educated, experienced, and owned property. The creation of the Constitution was kept secret until it was ready. James Madison kept notes, but it was free from outside influence, the decision to write the new constitution. It took them four months to complete, and the Philadelphia Convention, which was originally planned to revise the articles, became the Constitutional Convention. There were two different main plans, and uh, I'll read one and then I'll read the other. The Virginia Plan called for a strong national government. They wanted to have three separate branches, a bicameral legislature, and they favored large states with representation in Congress based on state's population. So that meant that they wanted to have a state that had more people get um, more representatives in Congress, and then in states that had fewer people living in them have, more, have fewer people representing them in Congress, which would mean that the larger states would have an advantage. The New Jersey plan wanted a revision of the Articles with more power. They were wanted to have a unicameral legislature, and they favored small states with representation in Congress being equal for each state. One state, every state would get one delegate, and each delegate would get one vote, no matter the size of the state. 
because neither of these, um, neither the Virginia plan nor the New Jersey plan was exactly what everybody wanted, they did something called the Connecticut Compromise. So the issue was how to determine representation in Congress. The opponents were the large versus small states. It was resolved by creating a bicameral legislature. The House was based on population and the Senate was equal so that you would have two representatives per state. Then we had the three-fifths compromise. The issue was how to count slaves for taxes and representation in Congress. The opponents were the North versus the South, and this was resolved by saying that they would count every five slaves as three people for both taxes and representation. Obviously, uh, slavery was wrong and is wrong, and we don't support that, but it was a part of history, so we still have to learn about it, and that's why we are learning about that specific part of the Constitution and uh, how it was made. So, commerce and slave trade compromise. The issue was the taxation of the exports and slaves trade, which was the opponents were the North versus the South again. And it was resolved by the national government would be forbidden to tax exports and would not interfere with the slave trade for 20 years. The next section is called ratifying the Constitution. And ratifying basically just means confirming or, like, allowing it to happen. They needed nine out of the 13 states to make this Constitution pass. Federalists favored the new Constitution, and they argued for it by saying, look what happened to the nation under the weak Articles of Confederation. We had a lot of problems. The country was falling apart. Anti-Federalists opposed the new Constitution, and their arguments against it involved that it had no mention of God, there was no Bill of Rights, the states couldn't print their own money, and there would be the increased power of national government, and we just fought a war against a government with increased power. Do we really want to do that? After heated debates in the states, nine states ratified the Constitution, but the Constitution does not go into effect because New York and Virginia refused to sign. The Constitution goes into effect in 1789. The Constitution was imperfect, but none better could be framed, which was another quote by Ben Franklin. Actually, it's not. We didn't have one yet. And that is the end of that section of notes. Perfect!